Okay. One, two, three, start. So this question is about the population mean again. So we're going to find the uh, p value using the step crunch. But and we need to find the test value. When we find the test value, we need the x bar sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Usually the question gives us the sample information, but this time, instead of giving us the n x bar or standard deviation, the question gives us this whole data set. So what do we do? One way to do this problem is to use the formula to find the average and use the shorter formula of the variance to find the variance and then find the standard deviation that can uh, take a lot of time to find. So this is what you can do. You can use the stat crunch to find the test value and the p-value. And when you do this, instead of using the question help to open stat crunch, when you have the data set given to you, you have to use this little icon that you have at the end of the data set and use that icon, click the button, and then open in stack crunch. You needed to use this icon behind the data set to open stack crunch so that this stack crunch can keep the data values. After you open the stack crunch using the little button behind the data set, then you do the same thing, go stats. The claim is about the mean, so we're going to use the T stats. Next is one sample. This time, it's not with the summary because we don't have the summary of the data. So we have the actual data set. So you have to click with data. Then you are going to select the column that has data set in it, which is variable one column. We had our data set in the first column. And then you have to input h0 statement was equal to 12. And the other one was, was it less than? <coughs> greater than. Let me see. Less than. It was less than? Okay, I'll just choose less than and then compute. Then it gives us the test value of negative 2.1846572 and p value of 0 0.0284. So when you have the data set, you have to use the little icon behind the data set to open stack crunch. If we just go to the question help and open the data set, then the stack crunch is not going to have the data set in it you must use this little icon behind the data set. Okay, now you can stop. Three, start. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, one, two, three, start. Question help. Stack crunch. Then we use the stats. And then this time your claim is about the proportion, so we're going to choose proportion stats, one sample, and then with the summary. And let me just make, make this a little bigger, it's smaller. Then we have to input the values. Number of observation was the sample size, that was 223. Number of that was 52. Then H0 statement was equal to 0 0.20. And H1 was, was it less than? Let me see. Greater than. Okay, we have to change to greater than. And then compute. Then we see the p value and the test value. What is the test value we see? 1.2388516. That's called the G stat here. p value is 0 0.1077. So you get the test value and the p value here. Now you can stop. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to find the p-value using the step crunch. Okay, you are going to, let me just make it a little bit bigger. You have to go to question help. Click step crunch. And then choose step. T steps. When the claim is about the population mean, you are going to use the t stats. When the claim is about the proportion, you are going to use proportion stats. This time, the claim is about the population mean, you are going to use the t stats, and then choose one sample with the summary. You have a summary of data. You have the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Then let me just make this a little bit smaller. And then it doesn't display the whole thing. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Then you have to input the sample information. Sample mean was 
sample standard deviation 5.3 sample size was 25 and the claim was was what the H0 statement mean was equal to 25.4 HA same as H1 it was less than 25.4 so you have to input the values and click compute then we get the p-value here 0 0.0024 this is the value that I gave you earlier and in it calculates the p-value uh, p it also calculates the tested value it says it's negative 3.11323075 so this is how we're going to find the p-value and the tested value when we do the homework now we can stop ready I wish I have do you have any function that can you can do like some kind of blurry thing Whenever you capture me, you know? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me try. Be careful. <laughs> no, I'm not filming you. I'm just filming this. Okay. Thing. As soon as I see you, let's do this again. You don't have um. You. Okay, let's just do this. Again, we have a data set. one, two, three. Start. We have data set. We use the I connect the data set to open the data set in the stack crunch. Then what do we do? Step. Regression, simple linear. Then you choose the X and Y and compute. Then we get the equation of regression line here. We have 62.46. And we're going to round to one decimal place. So I want you to memorize this number. We get 62.5 and 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, let's just write the equation. So what was it? 62.5. So we just use the stack crunch to find the equation and then check the answer. Okay, fantastic. Very good. Next one. Oh, I didn't guess. So give it, okay. Now we have to find the y value for this x value of 85. But before you use the equation of the regression line, this is what I want you to do. Find the p value. What's the p value? p value is 0 0.0821, which is higher than. 0 0.05 significance level. Then what do we do? Do we use this equation to find the y value here? No. We are going to use y bar. Sample mean of the y values as the y value here. But then this part does not really give the y bar value. Then what do we do? Then we use the stack crunch one more time. Open the data set in the stack crunch and then go to stat and then choose summary stat and color. Left arm is the y value, so you choose that dot variable and then press compute. It's going to compute the mean of this data set, y value for you. 157 is the average. The answer becomes 157. Then let's check. Nice work. Five minutes. Excellent. <laughs> so again, this time, p value is too big, so we are not using the equation of the regression line to find the y value. Then what do we use? y bar. And how do we find it? We go to stack crunch, we have actually open the data set in the stack crunch, and then we just did something different. What do we do? Open stack crunch again. We have to go to stat and summary stat. So there's a way to calculate the mean without using the formula. And one col columns, and then choose the column name that has the y value and compute. This is how we can find y bar sample mean. Okay, now we can stop. <laughs> P-value, let's check it one more time. P-value is 3603. 0 0.3603 makes 0. Okay, excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> Don't forget to order. <laughs> Okay, because p-value is less than significance or greater. Significance greater. level is 0 0.05 greater. greater. And there is More. insufficient of it. Nice work. Nice work, five minutes. Nice, nice work. work. Yeah. We are in five minutes for next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. Let's go to the next question. We need to actually solve four or five problems today. Should we solve this video? <coughs> No, we'll just keep doing this. Keep recording? Yeah. Next problem. For this problem, actually, the correlation coefficient is given, R value is given, 
sample mean for x value is given, sample mean for y is given. Instead of giving it the actual data set, it gives you the summary of the data set you have. And the p-value is already calculated, and equation of regression analysis is already given. Okay? What's the p-value? 0 0.159, r5 0 0.05. So clearly p-value is greater than alpha, then it means it's like having there's no, co there's no correlation. Okay, earlier we checked the compare the R value with the critical value, and when the R value falls within the critical region, we said there was positive correlation, there's negative correlation here. That's the same as actually getting a small p-value. This time our p-value is too big, it's greater than alpha. So what do you remember that we are not supposed to use the equation of the regression line to guess the y value? What do we use? Instead of using the equation to find the future prediction, we decided to use y bar. Sample mean for y value as the, as the point estimate. So we're going to put 6.0. So you have to understand why we are not using the equation of the regression line to get the y value. Our p value is too big. There's no correlation. So we just use y bar as the, as the point estimate of y value. Check. Fantastic. Five minutes. Good job. <laughs> Next question. And then here we again we have x bar, y bar, correlation coefficient, p value of zero. That means we have a strong correlation. That means we can use this equation to find the future y value. What do we have to do? Find the y value for given x value of 97. So we just have to use a calculator and do 13.34 plus 0.87 times 97. Let me do this. 13.34 plus 0.87 times 90. 97. 7 is 97.73. It's rounded to two decimals, so we get 97.73. Let's check the answer. It's going to be um, fantastic. fantastic. Five minutes. Excellent. Well done. So do you understand the difference between the second and third problem? Mm -hmm. Second problem has a large p-value. So we don't use the equation of the regression line to find the y-value. Third problem has a small p-value, so we may use the equation of the regression line to find the y-value. Now you can start. Okay. Then let's go back to the problem question. So what's the linear correlation coefficient? What was the number? The number was R value here, negative 0 0.290, negative 0 0.290, it says we should round to three decimal places, and then we are going to check the answer. Okay, I'm going to guess for you, well done. Mm -hmm. Nice That's work. <laughs> And then it's always this, always with the equal sign for H0 statement and not equal for H1 with the value 0 and 0. So if we have to find H0 and H1 statement for this correlation coefficient, just use 0 and equal and not equal sign. And then check. For each Fantastic. Question? Yes, for each one. <laughs> Every question. Excellent. Check answer. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, well done. done. Test statistic, that's the test value. Let me see, what was the test value? Okay, negative 0 0.9587. Please memorize this. Round it to two decimal places. Negative 0.9586. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> P value, start. One, two, three. So we have a data set given to us. And whenever data set is given, we need to use this little icon next to the data set to open stack crunch. Don't go to question how to open stack crunch. Now the stack crunch has the data set you have. To find the correlation coefficient, we go to stat and then choose regression simple linear. Let me just write, make this bigger. And then we have two variables. Choose the first one is x, second one is y, and then compute. Then this time, 
it says uh, sample size is 12, that's n, and then it says r correlation coefficient, that's negative 0 0.29014327. So it's pretty easy to find the correlation coefficient using the seconds. You don't have to do any computation, you don't have to use the formula. So that's going to be the correlation coefficient. And then if we if you ever need um, test value or the p value, you can get those numbers from here. It looks like we have two t tests, two p values. Just use the bottom ones if you need the p value or the test value. Okay. Then let's go back to the problem question. So what's the linear correlation coefficient? What was the number? The number was R value here negative zero point two nine zero. Negative zero point two nine zero. It says we should round the three decimal places. And then we are going to check the answer. Okay, I'm going to guess for you. Well done. Nice, nice work. work. <laughs> And then it's always this, always with the equal sign for H0 statement and not equal for H1 with the value 0 and 0. So if we have to find H0 and H1 statement for this correlation coefficient, just use 0 and equal and not equal sign. And then check. For each Fantastic. Question? Yes, for each one, every question. <laughs> check answer. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, well done. done. Test statistic, that's the test value. Let me see, what was the test value? Okay, negative 0 0.9587. Please memorize this. Round it to two decimal places. Negative 0 0.9586. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> P value, let's see. 